while fires have become a major problem. Natural resources are destroyed, the economic value of the forest is hindered, and lives are threatened. 2017 was a particularly catastrophic year for Portugal. Around 100 people died and it is estimated that a total surface of about 40-50 thousand hectares were ravaged by fire. This burnt area corresponds to 60% of the total burnt in Europe, a number that's even more impressive when we realize that the Portuguese territory represents just 2% of the European continent. Let us take a look at the evolution of the burnt area in Portugal in the last 15 years. The red line represents the average burnt area of this period. We can see that 2017 value is way above this average. Never before such a large surface has been burnt. Recent studies predict that wildfires will become more common, more severe, and that we will start having longer wildfire seasons. Policies apart, what can scientists do to minimize the risk and the damage caused by wildfires? In other words, what does science have to bring into the field of fire prevention and fighting? We can start with the understanding of fire behavior. We can study the physical and the chemical mechanisms underlying it. We can study past wildfires. We can go to the lab and perform experiments. From here, we are a step away from a computer simulation of a fire. And that is exactly what this project is about. In particular, we want to simulate the megafires of 2017 by using cellular automata. Cellular automata were first proposed by Stanislaw Ulam and von Neumann and have been used to model systems in physics, biology, mathematics, computer science and even in social sciences and philosophy. To perform a cellular automata simulation of fire propagation, all we need is a grid, for instance a two-dimensional grid divided in square cells. Then we define a neighborhood of a cell. We can choose the four cells sharing a site with the central cell, or we can go for any cell that shares either a site or a vertex with it. These are just two examples of a neighborhood. Now we must define a few possible states of a cell. In our case, cells can be either flammable or not flammable. And from this we have not burning, burning and burnt cells. And now we make our system evolve in time let's say, every 10 minutes. To have an evolution, we must set our rules of propagation of fire. We allow fire to be propagated from a cell on fire to neighboring flammable cells. Only the cells that are not burning can be ignited. The burning cells will be fully burned at the next iteration. In this example, there are eight possible directions of propagation. But experience tells us that fire is not spread homogeneously. Some types of vegetation are more flammable than others, and when the density of vegetation is high, fire can spread much faster to its surroundings. If the wind is strong and blows in a well-defined direction, fire will be propagated preferentially along that same direction. It is a well-known fact that fire propagates faster uphill than downhill. So our model must take into account all these factors when deciding which cells are to be burnt. A computer simulation is expected to run as fast as possible and to produce accurate results. The idea will always be to improve these simulations until the day comes that they can be used as operational tools by firefighters, helping them to manage their resources in the most efficient way.